Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to this Monday broadcast of our Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Thank you so much for joining us and for starting off your week in the Word. I believe this is going to be such a blessing to you. My name is Mike Pickett, and I'm blessed to be your host today as well. And I'll, I'll tell you, I'm excited. We have Ricky Burge, who's going to be sharing with us. And for the, many of you who uh, have, have joined us before and seen him before, you know it's going to be an exciting time in the Word. Uh, but, but before we jump into the Word, again, we just want to lay some foundations and some ground rules on how we're actually going to be conducting this live Bible study. And since it is a live Bible study, we don't want you to just sit there and listen. We actually want you to participate in these Bible studies. So we're going to leave about 10 to 15 minutes at the end of our sharing of the Word where we're going to ask you to actually participate and submit questions to us. So, and you don't have to wait till the end. Please feel free, even uh, as, as the topic gets going, please, as those questions arise, just go down to the chat section in whichever form that you're watching in and submit those questions to us. And, and we'll, uh, again, we're going to leave time at the end of, uh, of our sharing of the word. We're, we're going to get to as many questions as possible. And just to remind you, if you can keep those questions on topic, you're much more likely to have those questions answered. Also, we'd like to remind you that we have some amazing prayer ministers standing by even right now waiting, waiting to take your calls. If you have any prayer needs, any prayer requests, or any questions about what's being shared today, please just give us a call at 719-635-1111. Again, there's some awesome prayer ministers there who are waiting for you, waiting, stand by, standing by waiting for you. They're there 24 hours a day, five days a week. That's Monday through Friday, as well as on Saturdays and Sundays, both from 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. So we encourage you to reach out to us if you need prayer, if you need somebody to believe and stand in the gap with you. It's an awesome time where you can connect with the ministry. And even when you call in, what they're going to be able to do is they're going to be able to direct you to our website, which is www.awmi.net, where we have over 200,000 hours of free materials that you can listen to right there online. You can download to your mobile devices just to stay in the Word at all times. And uh, I, can, I, I can pretty much say that if, if you're going through something and you need encouragement in the Word, AWMI is a great, great place to be because it's, it's, it's just, uh, just open, accessible, free materials for you to be blessed and begin that discipleship process that the Lord has for you. So we encourage you, check us out there. And while you're, while you're there, you'll be able to check out all the different events that we're having here. Uh, at Karis Bible College in Woodland Park. You know, uh, this, this month, as a matter of fact, in just about a week and a half, we have the men's advance coming up. I tell you, uh, men, it's going to be an awesome time where we have just a, a tremendous amount of people coming in. We have James Brown, Tony Dungy, Andrew Womack sharing with us. It's going to be a great time in the Word where, again, we can fellowship. And it's just amazing. Every time I come to this, it gets better and better every single year. And we have a group of men coming together, praising the Lord, sharpening each other in the Word of God. It's always an amazing time. So check us out to discover uh, more about the men's advance as well as other events that are going to be happening here on campus and then all over the United States as well. So. Also, we'd like to remind you that this, that this is a viewer-supported broadcast, so we encourage you to partner with this ministry. What's amazing is as the ministry, as, as the ministry go, uh, puts these Bible studies out, it's, going, it's being broadcast all over the world through the Internet. So this is an incredible opportunity for you to partner with us, to, to sow into this ministry so that uh, we can continue to do this. It does cost money to put these live streams out, so this is a great opportunity for you to partner with us. And again, like we say pretty consistently around here, that whether you're going or whether you're sending, praise God, the, the Word of God is so good. God just loves blessing His children. So we all have the same reward. So it's a great opportunity to sow into this ministry. So if you're watching us on Facebook, you can go down to that Donate button. Just click on the Donate button. Or you can visit us again at www.awmi.net backslash give and where you, can, where you can sow into this ministry here. So we encourage you just to be a participant in, um, in, in the ministry. And then finally, Finally, just to remind you all that we do have these live Bible studies Monday through Friday. So on Mondays and Fridays, they're at, they're at 10 a.m., just like um, this is all, all the times are Mountain Time. 10 a.m. Mountain Time, just like it is this morning. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, they're at 6 p.m. Mountain Time. Then bright and early at 7 a.m. Mountain Time is going to be on, is our Wednesday broadcast. So we in, in, encourage you to join us. On top of that, we also have some amazing other um, broadcasts, live casts being done as well. And, and that's on, on Mondays, we have 
Uh, at 6 p.m. Mountain Time, we have our Truth and Liberty broadcast, which is an amazing time to really discover a biblical worldview on our government and what 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 actually should be de being done in our government, and, and just have some amazing people with uh, the incredible experience of having participated in government as well as having knowledge, a greater knowledge of it. They're going to be sharing on different principles, and then also on Thursdays afternoons at 1 p.m. Mountain Time, we have our healing school. So we encourage you, if you know anybody who is believing God. For healing, or if you're believing God for healing, please just join us during that time. We know you that you're going to be blessed. So this morning again, we have uh, with us Ricky Burge. Sorry, um, Ricky is. Uh, gosh, he he's worn so many different hats in this ministry. He graduated back from our third year program, and I believe it was in 2014. As well as he he went right over to Uganda, where he was in charge of our demo project, which is our discipleship evangelism missions outreach. Uh, teaching um, discipleship evangelism, I'll, I'll tell you, digging wells, doing all these different aspects of reaching out to people. Recently, he's come back here to Colorado where he's heading up our night school and our Saturday hybrid school, as well as teaching quite a bit in missions and global training. So we're really excited to have Ricky with us. And like I said before, if you've joined us before, you know that Ricky's a powerhouse. He's full of the word and he's gonna, he's, he's definitely gonna, gonna challenge us in the word. So Ricky, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Mike, I appreciate you. Uh, we're, we're excited about hearing what you have to share with us. Yeah, <clears throat> well, over the weekend, I was praying about what the Lord wanted me to share. And again, like I've done before, I had something where I was, this is, this might be good. You know, this is a good word. But then I was just, I just felt like the Lord was saying that his people need to be comforted. Amen. And that there's a lot of anxiety in the world or in the church. Um, there's a lot of fear. People are thinking is the Corona vaccine, the mark of the beast. If yeah. I don't take it, will I keep my job or can I travel? And uh, you know, the change of government yeah. and the worldwide pandemic, we thought it would be over by now, but it's not. Yeah. And uh, the economy and people's lost jobs and some people haven't been able to get the unemployment and just all these different things are happening in our world today. And so I just really felt impressed that God was like, I want my people to be comforted. Amen. So the yeah. message I'm going to share with you guys today is called Comfort My People. Um, I'm going to start from Psalm chapter 94, verses 16 to 19. And everything I'm using is the New King James Version. So Psalms 94, verse 16. And who will rise up for me against the evildoers? And who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Now, this is not the Lord saying who's going to stand up for me. But this is the psalmist. And the psalm, it, it, the psalm doesn't, like, uh, it tell us who, he, who this was. It wasn't David or Solomon or the sons of Korah or somebody. But... This is a person who has a heart for God, who has a sense of justice, mm -hmm. um, and who's looking out at the world and looking out at the condition of the nation of Israel. And he's saying, who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquities? Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul would soon have settled in silence. In other words, if God wouldn't have helped me when uh, these evil people were kind of ruling over me and oppressing me and in charge of certain things. He says, I would have just kept silent. Mm -hmm. But because the Lord has helped me, I've written a whole psalm about it and how Amen. God has intervened on behalf of the righteous. Amen. And he, he says that if I say my foot slips, your mercy, O Lord, will hold me up. And in the multitude of my anxieties within me, your comfort to delight my soul. And so I love what the psalmist is saying. He's saying that even if my foot slips, then I'm going to look to your mercy. Your mercy is going to hold me up. In other words, we don't have to walk perfectly. We don't have to do execute the will of God tit for tat, you know, where there's no room for error. But he's saying that even if our foot slips, even if we make a mistake or we don't um, do things the exact way we should, but that the mercy of God is so good that he'll, he'll hold us up. Amen. He'll keep us, even when my foot slips, he'll keep us from falling. Amen. He'll keep us from going down. He'll keep the enemy from being able to overtake me. And then he says that there has been a multitude of anxieties within me. In other words, my thoughts are full of, of I'm sorry, within me, there's so much things that are um, taking away my peace and taking away my confidence and taking away my, my courage. And I'm just full of anxiety. But he says, in the multitude of these anxieties which are within me, he says that his comforts delight my soul. Amen. You know, the soul is the place, the, the mind, the will, the emotions is where we think, it's where we imagine, it's where we feel. That's the soul area of us. And that word delight actually in the, you know, strong uses the old King James, it says fondle, but it really means to tickle. 
Mm. It actually means that God's comfort tickles my soul. In other words, the imagery is like a father playing with his child, Amen. where the child is just laughing uncontrollably. The child is just childlike, playful. It's completely engaged in this moment with its father. It's in the, the father's arms. It's completely safe and perfect. And that's what the comfort of God does for us. It just, we, we forget the troubles and the problems and we take our eyes off of all of these different things that are happening around us. And we just completely engage in this relationship with the father where we begin to laugh uncontrollably. We become childlike, we become playful. We just become carefree. We just become, we feel like we're safe, you know? And that's how the Lord wants to um, comfort us. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at uh, how the word comfort was used in the Old Testament and the different applications it has. And then I'm going to go into the New Testament and look at what the Lord has done for us. Um, let's go to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40, I'm going to read verses 1 and 2. And it starts off with this word comfort. It says, comfort, yes, comfort my people says your God, speak comfort to Jerusalem. You could easily say, speak comfort to the church. You could easily say, speak comfort to America and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned for she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Now there's a lot of things we can talk about there, but just so that we can kind of keep track on this line of comfort, all I'm going to do is say that, first of all, we have received something from the Lord's hand and it's double. It's more than what was needed, right? It says that the comfort comes from the place that we have received something from God for our situation, for our circumstances, for where we are today and the, situ the, the situation we find ourselves in. Mm -hmm. And we didn't receive a, a, a less than what was necessary. We didn't receive exactly what was necessary, but we received double. We received Amen. an abundant amount of surplus amount of what was necessary in order for us to succeed and to have victory in this, in this time. Amen. And I just want us to look at what did we receive from the Lord's hand and how it can superabound in our life. In other words, how do we walk in the comfort of God right now? How do I walk in a place where um, I am not overtaken by sorrows and fear and the anxieties are no longer dominating my heart, but I find, come to a place where I find comfort. Now the Hebrew word for comfort, um, it means to console, it means to ease, it means to sigh or breathe strongly, uh, it means to avenge oneself, to repent, to pity, or to be sorrowful in a favorable sense. Now, the one that I like is the one to sigh, to breathe strongly, right? It's like the comfort of God causes you to just take a breath and just say, <sighs> it's right. Like, I don't know if you've maybe, let's say you've ever studied for a test mm -hmm. and you studied and you took the test. You got all this anxiety, all this built up anticipation. And it's like, I don't want to get this. I got a lot riding on this test. And then you finish the test and let's say it takes a week for the results to come in. So that whole week you're just thinking, man, did I answer this right? Did I answer that right? Did I prepare enough? Did I do all of this? And then the results come back that you got a 90%. You pass with an A plus, right? Mm -hmm. what, at that moment, what happens is you just, you take a breath, you relax, you breathe, you sigh. It just, the burden is off of your shoulders. You're no longer... Yeah. Um, carrying that weight of anxiety. That's what the comfort of God means here. It means to just be able to let it go. Yep. And so this word, um, it was also used in Genesis chapter 5, verse 28 to 29, talking about Noah. So one of the descriptions that this word was used was uh, to describe solutions. So Genesis 5, verse 28 to 29 says this, Lamech lived 182 years and had a son, and he called his name Noah. Now the name Noah means rest. And saying that this one will comfort us concerning our work and the toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord had cursed. Hmm. Now let's just combine this with Genesis chapter 8, verse 21. Um, it says that, and the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. Although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, nor will I again destroy every living creature, uh, every living thing as I have done. And so when you put those two together, you find that I don't know if Lamech was prophesying by faith. I don't know if the string, the, the strain of daily life was just so hard. He just, he was just hoping his son could be a solution or if God had given 
given Lameca a revelation that, you know what, your son is going to be, he's going to bring rest to your people. And he's going to be basically the reversal of the curse mm -hmm. in Genesis 3 when God said, I'm going to thorns and thistles, you mm -hmm. know. But what we see here is that through the covenant of Noah, when Noah offered up that sacrifice, it was a smooth, uh, soothing aroma to the Lord. And he said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. Amen. And so what happens is God comforted the people, of, the people in this day by sending a solution in the package of Noah. Amen. Noah's name meant rest. He brought people rest when they all they knew was a life of toil and hardship and the hard ground and I mean if you I really believe that from this time on actually there was a reversal of that curse and God did not he's not cursed the ground for man's sake since this time mm -hmm. I mean if you, I lived in Uganda for, for six years I lived and worked there for six years I mean you can take a skittle and put a skittle in the ground <laughs> and it's going to shoot up a family pack of skittles You're like anything <laughs> can grow in Uganda you can put a butterfinger it doesn't matter <laughs> it's just going to come out of the ground because the, it's so fertile and so yeah. And so I do not believe that the ground is cursed. And I believe that the curse was reversed Amen. through the covenant God made with Noah. Amen. And so sometimes God comforts us in the form of sending us people who will be solutions for uh, what's going on in our lives. That's right. Um, let's look at the same word comfort. It was used in Genesis chapter 24, verse 67. It says, then Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and he took Rebekah and she became his wife and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. That's the same word that we find in Isaiah chapter 40, right? Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Sometimes God brings um, comfort in the form of relationships, mm -hmm. right? And so um, we don't need to be um, there was a friend of mine who was saying something about when God tells you no, it's not because that it's because he has something better for you. Right. God never takes away something and just kind of leaves a gap there, but he, the, the Lord replaces. That's right. Remember, and we receive double from the Lord's hand. Mm -hmm. And so when the Lord replaces, he takes something out of, he takes something out of your life, um, but he replaces it with something doubly better. Amen. Something that is abundantly better, something that is so much exceedingly and abundantly above what you could have thought or imagined you could have received. Right. So we don't need to settle for the things that are in our lives. Sometimes something has to die in our lives in order for God to have room to actually pour out what he really wants to give us and what he really wants to bless us with. And so sometimes you just don't be afraid if the Lord says no, or don't be afraid if the Lord is pruning you and taking some things out of your life because he's, he's taking away that which is good in order to give you that which is great. Amen. He's taking away that which is great to give you that which is phenomenal. And so um, I just want to encourage you, even in your relationships, that um, God can bring you comfort in that relationships. Uh, maybe you have sorrow from loss, but the comfort of him replacing that, what you've lost is going to be double from his hand. Amen. You know, Amen. Uh, another place where this scripture was used, uh, the word comfort in the Hebrew there is Psalm chapter 23, verse four. We all know this scripture. David is saying, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That's that Hebrew word that we get from Isaiah chapter 40 about comfort. And so what David is saying is that even when I'm in a dark place of my life, I'm in the valley of the shadow of death. Like not only is it a dark place, but I'm in a valley. Like I'm at the lowest place in my life and it's at the darkest place in my life. He says, yeah, even though I'm at the lowest place and the darkest place in my life, I will not fear evil. Amen. Why? Because God is with me and his rod and his staff, they comfort me. Amen. And so uh, God's protecting and guiding presence is also one of the, the uses of this word and how the Lord comforts us. It's his presence. His presence protects us and his presence guides us. You know, the rod was protection. That's right. The rod was like, if there's a wolf coming, you use the rod to hit the wolf or to hit the bear or to hit the lion or to protect the sheep, right? Mm -hmm. The rod is to defend that which God has given you. But the staff is to, um, to comfort, right? If I begin to stray, the staff begins to bring me back, back closer, yeah. right? Amen. So, so the, the staff rescues, it guides, mm -hmm. it makes sure that I'm still on the path. Amen. It makes sure that I can sit down beside still waters. It makes sure that I'm at the table prepared in the presence of my enemies. Mm -hmm. You know, it makes sure that my cup is running over. Amen. It makes sure that goodness and mercy follows me all the days of my life. Amen. God's staff 
helps me to adjust as I navigate this, this dark and this valley of the shadow of death, mm -hmm. where maybe I can't see five feet in front of me, but that staff is able to guide me and to give me that gentle nudge to say, go that way, or the mm -hmm. gentle nudge to go that way. That's and great. while he's nudging me and, and guiding me and, and rescuing me when I go astray, he's also protecting me from all these things that I don't even see around me. Amen. Man, I'm telling you, the presence of God is so awesome. And it should comfort us that God is protecting you and at the same time, he is also guiding you. So you got to trust God's ability to lead you more than you trust your ability to follow him. Amen. And that, that's what grace really is right there. Yeah. It's, it's com a complete reliance upon his abilities on the inside of you, not your own strength to, oh, yeah. to get these things done. And like you said before, it's, it's that same God who is protecting you is also the one comforting you. Yes. And, there, and, there's, and, there's, and every single time something happens, whether it's, I mean, we live in this world, and obviously we're not of the, we're not of the world, but we're in the world. Right. So when this, these things happen, we, we can rest assured that in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, we know that all things work together for good mm -hmm. for those who love God. Yes, sir. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, it's the presence of the Lord in our lives. Amen. You know, and the Lord never leaves us, nor does he forsake us. You know, even in times where you don't feel, you know, your emotions don't feel his presence, you're not overwhelmed, you just have to take it by faith that you know what the Lord is, man, he has protected me from things that I don't even know about. Amen. There's darts that the enemy has thrown, people he tried to bring in. He is so good at protecting us that we don't even know or recognize the danger. And actually, that's what a good shepherd does. A good shepherd stays awake while the sleep, the sheep are asleep, they're resting, they're peaceful. And so what the shepherd does, is he stays awake to make sure in order for these sheep to have good sleep and to be peaceful and to have rest and to not have to worry about their lives because the shepherd is watching over them night and day to protect them from things seen and unseen. Um, and so I just, you know, God is just a good God. And Amen. so he's so far ahead of us. He declares us the end from the beginning. Jesus is the Lamb of God slain before the foundations of the world. God isn't just trying to find solutions for you right now, but he's so far ahead of you in your life. And if you can just take, let him hit you with that gentle nudge or let him rescue you when, he, when, when you begin to go astray, what you'll find is that you don't have to necessarily trust your path, mm -hmm. but trust the staff. Amen. Trust, trust his ability to lead you more than you trust your ability to follow. Amen. You know, it's okay if you're in a dark place, if you're confused with where you are in life, if you don't know what's going on in the world, if you don't have all the answers to what's happening, you don't have to. The comfort comes from knowing that God, who, who was the Alpha and the Omega, who was the Ancient of Days, who's so far ahead of you, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow, he knows what's going to happen 10,000 years from now, trusting that that God is able to lead you and guide you through this, this dark and confusing world. Um, that's where I find comfort from. Another place where this scripture is used is in Genesis chapter 50, verse 21. Um, it's talking about Joseph and his brothers. It says, now, therefore, this is Joseph speaking to his brothers. He says, now, therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them uh, and spoke kindly to them. And so this is used as reassurance in this um, in this passage of scripture, is this word is, is describing reassurance specifically for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Basically, um, Joseph, uh, Jacob had died, mm -hmm. and now Joseph's brothers are thinking, now that the old man is gone, maybe that was all that was keeping us from the wrath of Joseph. Yeah. And so they came to Joseph and were like, we're so sorry, please don't, maybe. Yep. And Joseph, he comforted them, he reassured them. He said, no, don't be afraid, I'll provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and he spoke kindly to them. And so that's the same word comfort that we find in Isaiah chapter 40. God will reassure us. Amen. He'll speak kindly to us that, yes, you are forgiven and I'm not holding anything against you. And um, I don't remember your sins anymore. And, you know, that just that reassurance that I'm with you um, and that there's nothing in between me and you. There's nothing separating us. There's nothing that I'm holding against you. That reassurance you know, brings comforts to our souls that you don't have to, you don't have the same God that maybe you might not be sure about. Is he really going to come through this time? Is he really going to help me right now? Or maybe I've, I've made a mistake, right? My, my foot has slipped. Is his mercy really going to hold me up? Yeah. You know, you may be thinking like that, but that same God is the same one who died on the cross for you <laughs> to demonstrate once and for all that I'm for you. I'm not against you. Right. And that 
no one can bring a charge against you because you are my elect. And that who is it condemned? It's not me because I'm the one who died to justify you. So why would I die to justify you and at the same and out of the same mouth come and condemn you? No, out of, you know, God is not um, double minded. He doesn't bring sweet waters and bitter waters out of the same fountain. Mm -hmm. But God is consistent. He's consistently good. He's consistently forgiving. He's consistently loving you. And so we can have that reassurance and that reassurance should bring us comfort. Um, so I'm going to go into the new covenant now and we'll just look at what through the cross and through the, 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 the finished work of Jesus Christ, what have we received from the Lord's hands in order to, for us to walk in the comfort of God? First of all, let's look at um, Romans chapter 15 and I'm going to read verses four to five. Romans chapter 15, verses four to five. It says this, for whatever things were written before were written for our learning that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now may the God of patience once again and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another according to Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus. So it says that through the patience and the comfort of the scriptures, that's where we get this hope from. And it says that God is the God of patience and comfort. And so what we look at is that if you are patient enough to get into the word, patient enough to, to, to study the word of God, patient enough to let the word of God work its work in you, then it will work a work of comfort and which will give you hope, right? You can't just... Uh, read a devotional, you know, for five minutes a day, or you got to have enough patience to say, you know what, I got to be still to know God. I've got to, I've got to apply myself to the word of God because the things that are written in the word of God were written for our learning. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of the, let me just give you an example of what I mean, just to be practical. I was studying the other weekend in Ecclesiastes chapter one, where Solomon talks about there's nothing new under the sun. That which is already has been. Mm -hmm. And so whatever we see today is happening, like it's not new. There's nothing new under the sun. These things have been happening since Amen. the foundation of the world. That's right. And actually it's not even as bad as it could be because there's no angels sleeping with women producing giants. Amen. You know, I've seen some strong, buff, swole brothers, but I've never seen a Goliath. I've never seen somebody nine feet tall with a bronze shield, you know, like yeah. I've never seen that. Mm. And so there are some things that are happening today that may be a cause for concern, but you find comfort in knowing that this is not the first time these things have ever happened. Amen. You know, Nebuchadnezzar is, is, was worse than what's going on right now. Well, the days you know? of Noah were, were worse than what's happening right now. Exactly. So you just got to take that in context That's and right. say, hey, man, look at, the, look at where we've come from as yeah. a people. And us as a people, we've never been positioned uh, we have never been better positioned for victory in the Amen. whole world. We have Amen. a better covenant established on better promises. Absolutely. We've got better stuff than Noah had, than Moses, than, than Abraham, than just pick any of your favorite Bible characters, Samson, whoever you want to talk about. We are, as the church, the new covenant people of God, we are positioned, positioned better for victory than any other people in any other generation that has ever lived. And so I find that if I'm patient enough to get into the scriptures, that the Lord will begin to help me make sense of my life, help me make sense of my situation, help me to put where, what's going on right now in context with history. That's what truth does. It helps you to bring context because it's so easy to take your situation out of context and say, Amen. this is the worst day ever. Yep. I, I've, I'm having the worst life ever. You know, my situation, no one has any, but scripture helps you to understand that it helps you make sense out of your situation Amen. Absolutely. to make sense out of where you are in your life. And then that helps you to kind of calm down those anxieties and take that breath and, and just say, okay, Lord, I'm ready to get up and yep. walk with you again. Amen. Um, Psalms 119 verses 49 to 52 says this, remember the word to your servant upon which you have caused me to hope. This is my comfort in my affliction for your word has given me life. The proud have me in great derision, yet I do not turn, I do not turn aside from your law. And this is what I really love. Amen. I remembered your judgments of old, O Lord, and have comforted myself. Amen. So really what he's saying is what we have received from the Lord's hand is the ability to comfort ourselves through the patience and comfort of the scriptures. Amen. That's right. That means that I don't have to wait for comfort to dump on me like a bucket of water. Mm -hmm. You know, like when they win the Super Bowl and they hit them with the Gatorade bucket. It's like, I'm just going to dump all this comfort on you. That's mm -hmm. not how God does it, actually. Mm -hmm. 
we have the ability to comfort ourselves, to dump the Gatorade bucket on ourselves anytime we feel discouraged That's by right. going in, remembering his judgments of old. That's right. Remembering what he did um, with the children of Israel when they crossed the Red Sea. Remembering how God took a man of Abraham out of the, the Ur and he was a, uh, you know, an idol worshiper and took that one man and built the whole nation out of him. Amen. You know, remember the judgments of old on how God gave strength to, to Samson. He was able to defeat the armies with a jawbone of a donkey. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, just oh, whatever, whatever story speaks to you specifically, just go back into the judgments of God and see how he came through time after time after time after time. God has never failed his people. He has always delivered us. I mean, it's so beautiful. We, he's trustworthy. He's consistent. And when you go back and when you're patient enough, to go back, yep. right? Amen. Because it takes some patience. It may take you a whole weekend to get in there and encourage yourself and go through person by person, chapter by chapter, and just go through all the highlights of how God has delivered his people. You got to be patient enough to do that. But if you are patient enough to do that, I assure you, you'll come out of that, that time of study with comfort. Amen. Um, let's look at number two. Uh, so the first one is the patient and comfort of the scriptures. Number two is prophecy. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3 says this, But he who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort to men. He speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort to men. Um, edification just basically means to build up like an edifice. It means to like uh, basically be under construction and God is building up something. Exhortation means to encourage, to admonish, to, to push forward. And then comfort. Um, is the word that we're dealing with there. And so that's the, the New Testament framework of prophecy. If someone prophesies to you and you get afraid and you start feeling like, man, the mark of the beast and the devil's going to do this and I, the, 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 you know, the, the man of sin is going to be revealed uh -huh. and uh -huh. the Antichrist and the mark, all this, that is not New Testament prophecy. Mm -hmm. New Test and we, first of all, we shouldn't be living by prophecy, but prophecy is there to confirm and comfort. Amen. And so, Christians, born again people have no reason to be afraid of the end times. Even if we are living in the end time right now, like somewhere in the book of Revelation, somewhere there. I mean, yeah. it's okay because we are in covenant with the Lord. Amen. And we have nothing to be afraid of. Scripture actually says that um, in 1 John 4, I believe it's 17, verse 17, it says that um, we, we have been, herein has love been perfected, that we have been given boldness in the day of judgment, mm -hmm. because as he is, so are we in this world. That's right. That means even when the, the books are opened and we stand before God, we should have boldness That's in right. the day of judgment. Amen. We should not Absolutely. be afraid or cowardly in the day of judgment. That's our Father. That's He's right. not judging us. He's judging all the that's right. Uncovenant heathens out there. That's right. And we got to work hard so that we bring as many people into covenant with God as possible. Amen. Because it's not going to be pretty. Amen. But it will be good for us. Amen. And so judgment day is actually a deliverance day for the church. Absolutely. It's not a day to be Absolutely. afraid of. Absolutely. And here's something that's important in Revelation 19, verse 10. Um, and, and I say Revelations, but it's actually called the book of the Revelation, Revelation of Jesus yeah. Christ, right? It's not the revelation of the Antichrist. It's not the revelation of the end time. It's not the revelation of the false prophet. Mm -hmm. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. Basically, the book of Revelation teaches us, it, re it reveals how Jesus is going to be victorious over everything that comes against us. Amen. That's what the purpose of the book of Revelation is Amen. about. Um, and this is what John says. He says, and I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, see that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. And he says, worship God with an exclamation point for the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. That's right. You see, he says, the angel is saying, hey, I'm just one of your brethren who has the testimony of Jesus. Mm -hmm. He said, all of us have the testimony of Jesus, and that testimony is the framework for the spirit of prophecy. All prophecy comes out of the framework of the testimony of Jesus. Amen. That he, he lived, he died, he rose again, and he will not be defeated. He cannot be defeated. Mm -hmm. That all his enemies are being made a footstool until the last enemy is destroyed. Mm -hmm. That's the framework that we should receive prophecy through. Amen. It's a framework of victory, not a framework of terror. Amen. Oh, um, you, God's judging a miracle, or God's judging the church, or God's judging people. That's not the testimony of Jesus Christ. Right. The testimony of Jesus Christ is that Jesus took our judgment upon himself. Amen. That's right. Man, I'm telling you, it should bring comfort to us, edification, exhortation, That's and right. not fear. Amen. Number three, because the time is, is, is coming down. Number three is the Holy Spirit, the comforter. 
Um, this is John chapter 14, verse 16 to 18. It says, and I will, this is Jesus talking, and I will pray to Father, and he will give you another helper, the old King James says, comforter, that he may abide with you forever, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. And then Jesus says, I will not leave you orphans, or the old King James says, comfortless, um, I will come to you. And so we see that the Holy Spirit who dwells in, he was with us, he dwells in us. And when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, according to Acts chapter one, he dwells upon you. Amen. And it says that he will never leave you. He will be with you forever. And so the Holy Spirit is a comforter. He's one who called to your side or to your aid. He's your helper, your assistant. Um, and so he will lead you into all truth. He'll remind you of the things that the Lord has spoken to you. He'll show you things to come. He'll give you what you need to say in the time that you need to say it. You don't have to worry because you have this ever present helper, assistant, Amen. aider to help you Amen. and to comfort you in times of uncertainty. Amen. Amen. Um, and I'm just going to push right through this real quick. Acts chapter 9 verse 31 says this, Then the churches throughout all Judea, Gal Gal Galilee, and Samaria had peace and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the spirit, they were multiplied. You know, when you walk in the fear of the Lord, you understand that I reverence and respect and honor God above everything else. Then that brings you comfort and the Holy Spirit is able to comfort you. Amen. Um, and then Acts chapter three, verse 19 says, repent. This is Peter talk. He says, repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Amen. Hey, man, if you've repented, if you've been converted, born again, your sins have been blotted out, then you have the presence of the Lord. And that means that the Holy Spirit is able to give you a time of refreshing Amen. anytime you need it. Amen. Anytime you need it. He never leaves you, never forsakes you. And here's the last thing I'm going to say. And that word time of refreshing means a recovery of breath or a personal revival. And here's the last one. The last one, number four, is uh, you get comforted while in the midst of the game. Amen. You got to get in the game Amen. or in the fight or in the struggle. And here's what Paul says. This is my last scripture. Second Corinthians chapter one, verse three to seven says this. Blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of mercies and God of all comfort who comforts us in our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. Now, if we are afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effective for enduring the same sufferings which we suffer. Or if we are comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope for you is steadfast because we know that as you are partakers of the sufferings, so also you will be partakers of the consolation. Amen. And the last thing I'll just say is that the Hebrew, the, the three Hebrew boys got a special kind of comfort when they got in the fire. Amen. You know, Paul and Silas got a special kind of comfort when they start singing at midnight. Right. Daniel got a special kind of comfort when he was in the lion's den. You got to get in the game. Mm -hmm. You got to get in the struggle. You got to get in the fight. Mm -hmm. And then there's a comfort um, that supersedes the tribulation or the afflictions. Amen. That's some good stuff, Ricky. Thank you. That's Thank awesome. You, Praise the Lord. Well, we got some awesome questions here as well. So we're going to go ahead and jump right in. So Shemaya on YouTube asked this question. I find that my comfort is inconsistent and it sways based upon the environment and situations I face. How can I remain or conti continuously live in this comfort, even in the most difficult of times? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, though I'm at the lowest point, I'm in the valley, and I'm also in the darkest point of my life, the shadow of death, I will not fear. Why? Because God is with me, and His rod of protection and His staff of, of guidance, is, 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 they comfort me. And so you've just got to, you've got to build that relationship with the Lord. And, and those are the four ways you can do it. You can just take the patience and comfort of the scriptures. You can take prophecy. The scripture says that we wage war through prophecy. Um, you can take, um, um, what was number three? <laughs> I'm sorry. My mind is all over the place. The Holy Spirit, the presence of God in your life. And then, you know, if you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, I encourage you, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need to speak in tongues on a daily basis. Um, it's not a religious thing. You can do it while you're driving or working or whatever you're doing, but you need to constantly be building yourself on your most holy faith. And so, um, and then just being in the game, there's a comfort that comes just from being active and being involved 
Um, there's a special, that he's an ever present help in our time of need. Amen. And so God is with you. You just got to position yourself and take advantage of what you've received from his hand. Amen. That's good stuff. So Timothy on Facebook asked this question. Hebrews chapter four, verse 11 says, let, let us labor therefore to enter into his rest. Mm -hmm. How do we labor to enter into that comfort? Yeah. So the labor is getting, mm -hmm. is the work that you, that is necessary to get rid of your unbelief. Because the, you, you'll find that the, the, he, those who, they did not enter into the promised land because of unbelief, right? So unbelief is what kept them from entering into the rest of God, which was the promised land. And so the work is once I get rid of my unbelief and once I'm able to walk in faith, then I'm able to enter into the rest of God. See, faith is what gives you rest. It's not when your circumstances line up and when everything's working in your life and you don't have any problems. And see, you can't give life, life doesn't give you permission to walk in the rest of God. Life doesn't give you permission. Your circumstances don't give you permission to walk in the comfort of God. What you've got to do is you've got to walk by faith and not by what you see around you. Amen. And that is where you enter into the Lord's rest. And so the work that we do, the labor um, is a labor of removing all doubt and unbelief from our lives. That's good. Amen. Yeah. So Dana on Facebook asked this question. We had another similar question as well. Okay. Um, how do I know when to comfort others or seek comfort myself versus when should I allow to, the rod to do its work? And then maybe, <laughs> may, maybe a, um, a little bit bolder of a statement that it kind of goes together. Will God allow or does, or does he cause hard times so that he can also teach me and show me his comfort? No, absolutely not. No, God's not going to cause hard times in your life. <clears throat> Jesus had enough hard times on your behalf, <laughs> you know, and so the, trans, the, the chastisement of your peace was upon him. God's not going to uh, bring chastisement so that you can have peace. No, Jesus took your chastisement so that you can have peace with God. And so God doesn't lead us again from the outside. I think it's in Psalms 32. It says that do not be like donkey. Uh, who, who needs a bite and a brittle in order to be guided. But he says that um, he will lead you and instruct you in the way you should go. He will guide you with his eye. And so the way the Lord leads us is from the inside out. He leads us by vision, by showing us, you know, a picture's worth, uh, you know, a thousand words. Right. And so God's going to speak to you. He's going to show you things and that you just start moving in that direction. He's not going to lead you like an animal, like a donkey with a bite and a brittle and hitting you on the back and trying to push you in that direction. That's not how he does it. He leads you from the inside out. And so, um, and so, uh, no, God is not going to bring negative things in your life. And now someone asked about knowing when to comfort another person or when to let the rod do its work. Mm -hmm. Well, that's only the Holy Spirit can, that's a situational thing. You just got to know when it's time not to bear the burden of this person yeah. or when it's time for you to take up the burden of that person. Amen. Sometimes you have to, the strong has to bear the infirmities of the weak. And then sometimes you have to allow that person to walk out um, what they're going through by themselves. And so only the Lord can give you a wisdom. But James 1 says, if you pray, the Lord will give you wisdom and you'll know what to do in that, in that situation. And I'll just say this as well. You know, the, the greatest thing that we can do to cause people to walk in comfort is to bring them back to their relationship with God. Yes. Because, you know, God is the God of all comfort. And so yes. that being the case, if we, if we want to truly give them that blanket answer, it's, it, it's always found in their relationship with God, leading them back to the relationship with the Holy Spirit, yeah. to, 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 to the word of God, obviously that, that, that uh, and allow that whole, the word to become alive in their lives yeah. through the revelation of the Holy Spirit and through the relationship with God. Yeah. And which point, you know, at that point, then they, they've ex accessed the, the comfort of the Lord as well. Yeah, you know, we're facilitators. At, amen. There's that's one good. mediator between that's, God and man. We're that's just Christ that's Jesus. That's good. I'm just a facilitator. That's right. If I can help you connect into the socket, plug you into the that's socket, right. that's my job. That's but I'm not the socket. And, and it's the same thing. If we're if we need we're in need of comfort, it's because um, we have not been putting our attention where it needs to be put. Yes. So you go back to your relationship with God and say, Lord, I need you right now because yeah. some there's some there's some hardships, there's some fear, there's whatever it might be rising up on the inside of yeah. us. We get that comfort from that relationship with Him. Hey, and you know what too? It's a maturity thing because the patience and comfort of the Scriptures. You Amen. know, patience. A lot of people don't like that word, but it's there. I want patience. I want now. Exactly. <laughs> I just want to be comforted now. I just want to pray and I want to snap my finger, but it's not magic. It's right. not, you can't just flip the switch like that, but you've got to walk with God. Amen. And what happens is when you walk with God, you can always look back at, you know, in 1992 and 1995, all the way up to now, you rehearse your victories and Amen. it brings comfort. That's good. Yeah. That's really good. So Ray on YouTube asked this question. 
In 2 Corinthians 1, 3, it states that he's the God of all comfort. Can we say that when the unsaved feel comforted, it comes from God as well? Um, well, that's a wide question. Comforting in what? And what kind of comfort mm -hmm. is that? I mean, God is the God of, of all comfort, absolutely. Um, and even before Jesus came, nobody was saved. Nobody was born again. That's so right. God comforted people in the old covenant who did not have the Holy Spirit living in them. Mm -hmm. So yes, he is able to comfort someone who does not, who has not been born again and doesn't have the Holy Spirit in them, but they do not have access to the same level of comfort as we do. Amen. Yeah. Well, they don't have a trust. They don't have a hope in the future. Yeah. You know, and that's truly where our comfort comes from, knowing, knowing through experience that, that God's going to work out these situations for our good, that we, we are destined to be victorious in every area of our lives, and unfortunately yeah. they don't. However, God does open up that door, and, and you know, I believe the Holy Spirit is speaking to, to all men at all oh, times, yeah. whether he's being, people are being convicted of sin or of righteousness, yes. the Holy Spirit's always speaking to people. You know, that's what Jesus said in John 14, Mike. He said, the Holy Spirit, this comfort that I'm talking to you about, he says, he has been with you, but now he shall be in you. Amen. And then we know he comes upon us when we get baptized in the Holy Spirit. So there's different levels. Yeah, if you, if an unbeliever, the Holy Spirit is with them and trying to get inside of them. But once he has gotten, gotten inside of us and then he comes upon us, we have such a different level Amen. than somebody who the Holy Spirit is just with trying to help from the outside in because the Holy Spirit helps us from the inside out. Amen. That's yeah. good. Well, we want to encourage you if... Um, if you're in need of comfort, if you need in prayer, please feel free to give us a call at our phone line at 719-635-1111. If you're in need of comfort, I'll tell you something, the greatest decision that you can ever make is coming into relationship with the Lord Jesus yeah. because he is the God of all peace. He is the one who's gonna, who, who's, who promised to leave his peace with us. And so that's such a, it's such a blessing for us. And uh, uh, Ricky, thank you so much for sharing the word today. It's been an awesome blessing, awesome time in the word. And I believe that we've all been blessed. And so thank you so much for joining us today as well on this Monday. And I, I believe that this week holds some incredible revelation as well as some blessings for you as you continue on. So we thank you so much for joining us. And we look forward to again, again seeing you tomorrow night. Uh, actually, tonight, uh, if you want to join us for Truth and Liberty, you can join us again uh, either on, on one of our on one of our forums at 6 p.m. Mountain Time. And then, then again, just want to remind you that our next uh, Karis Daily Live Bible Study is tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. And we're going to have Andrew joining us again. Wow. He's been on vacation, and so it's going to it's great to have him back, and it's going to be an awesome time. So, once more, thank you so much, and we speak a blessing over you for the rest of your day. Blessings. Mm -hmm.